Deborah, mm -hmm. in 1962, you weren't quite on the scene no. with Kenneth. <laughs> uh, what do you think it was that convinced him to take this work on so early in his career? Well, I think he thought that, you know, there, there are not an awful lot of truly great ballet scores. Well, that's what he thought, whether people agreed with that or not, I'm not sure. But it's, you know, it's one of the truly great ones and probably the greatest one, certainly of the 20th century. And I don't know, I think he always just pitched above his weight if he could. <laughs> don't you think? Yes, but I also think he was... He liked the idea of Stravinsky because he'd oh, done his concertant. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think he wasn't afraid to tackle, because he was so musical, I don't think he was yeah. afraid to tackle it. I don't think it would have occurred to him not to have a go, actually. Mm. And, you know, looking at most of the scores he used, he was fascinated by the music coming out of the 20th century. Let's talk about um, Sidney Nolan's designs because mm. they're such an integral part of this ballet. Deborah, <laughs> why do you think Kenneth chose Sidney and what did he bring to this production? Sidney came up with these two um, ideas, and I think uh, from what, I mean, Monica will correct me, but the, um, for me, the, se the second um, piece with this big central iconic thing, which is either at the time that people thought it was a mushroom cloud, I don't think it was. I think it was the idea of the sun <laughs> and energy coming from the sun and there's wonderful sort of circles of people sitting underneath this extraordinary thing. And um, it's highly successful, I mm. think. Uh, mm. The only thing that, that um, moves apart from the body is the hair on the women, the sort of raffia decorative wigs that they're wearing, which also has a, a life, they have a life of their own, and it's, it's remarkable, actually. And they also have a sound. Yes. You can hear them swooshing, which yeah. I think is, it's lovely when yeah. you're dancing, because yeah. you can hear them. Yeah. Deborah, it's a real company piece, though, isn't it? I mean, oh, yes. there's very few ballets where it feels like you're part of a unit. And seeing that mass is really quite something, isn't it? Well, it's like a, a great engine for me. It's like a sort mm. of getting inside some incredible industrial thing with cogs and things all working. When it's working really well, that you just get this feeling of it. It's almost like an animal on the stage that's got this peculiar shape. I particularly like the scissors. I particularly, I think, always think that's a stroke of brilliance, actually. Yes. yes. This is uh, the entire company, and they are, they are in rows across the stage. And they line up, and then they lie down. And for those of you who haven't seen it, they lie down on their faces, and, and then they open their legs and close them. And the pianists played that little bit of music. Da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. And you hear, you hear the limbs you hear, on, on the floor cloth. They slide on the floor cloth, and that's known as scissors. And so the chosen person jumps in between the legs and then out the other side when the legs close. And, and they're holding on to their... And they're holding on yeah. to the feet. It's like Olympic synchronised swimming, yes, isn't it? Yes, it is rather like synchronised <laughs> swimming. Yes, it is. <laughs> in a similar Actually, we, we, we did it uh, earlier this year with the children. Oh, from the Chance to Dance children, who were aged nine or ten. I remember thinking, oh, well, jeepers, they surely have we not bitten off more than we can chew here. And of course, they rehearsed in their different schools around London, and um, several of the company went out to help rehearsal, uh, rehearsals. And then they all came together on Saturdays and Sundays here in the theatre. We said to them, if you get it right, you won't have to repeat it. <laughs> and of course, you know, they did get it wrong to start with, but they really were oh, amazing, and they ended up mm. being quite astonishing. Mm. And I think the best thing of all was that the wardrobe found some very old costumes, really, I suppose some of them almost archive. And, uh, and these little tiny people were in these great long all overs. And of course it didn't, it didn't matter that they were a bit wrinkly around the knees, you know, <laughs> because it was understood. And then there was one little girl who came to me one day and she went, look at my label. And I looked at the label and it said, Mason. <laughs> <laughs> And a very old costume. <laughs> very old costume. <laughs> <laughs>